Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah, hi there, my name's Timmy Joe, making videos about computers. Oh, my God. Hi there. So, what am I doing here? Well, I got some cool stuff, some cool hardware come across my desk. Figured I'd do a little testing. I'm always so wary on using used or older, you know, you know, five, four, five, seven years old, past its warranty period, AIO coolers, because I have this impression in my head, I even took one apart at one time, that... As, you know, time goes on, the fluid degradates the inside of them. And, uh, you know what? I got a six-year-old from 2012 Corsair, or the OG H100 from a friend. It's been in use for six years straight inside of, uh, you know, a system running on a, the original 8150. So I thought, what better to, you know, test it? It was very dirty when I got it. Didn't have the original fans, but then uh, another friend of mine loaned me uh, a lot of PC parts actually which will be coming up in an, uh, an episode soon but brand new H110i version 2 this would be the most up-to-date version of this cooler therefore we've got a little system going on and excuse me if you hear my son screaming because you know you got to do your videos when you can get your videos done so old versus new Mojo Combat! Here we go. So I've been running uh, on the 9590, one of the hottest CPUs of all time, the older Corsair H100, and been doing a little bit of, you know, testing. So let's check that out. Here we see Ida64 running. I've run it before this to, to check it out, but uh, it keeps at 5 gigahertz and like 1.55 volts, which is insane. Uh, the CPU at a cool... 60 between 58 and 62 degrees uh and the way this thing connects is a little odd it, even though even this one the way it connects is a little odd uh but it it's working very well like really well with the 9590 it will run over five gigahertz and keep within the 60 to 70 degree limit running the ida 64 stress test running uh multiple instances of um uh, Cinebench, so it's it's totally working. It's totally awesome. Now, I know I'm using the same fans for both, and maybe the fans on the original weren't as good as the newer ones. But that's not the point of the video. The point of the video was to see can a very well used AIO from six years ago, you know, a high end one, still perform as good as a brand new Corsair H110i version two. Uh, in some some tests and you know on, on one of the hotter CPUs so uh, you know she's running very well and uh, you know if you want to check out you know what what this OG one was about I'll put a link in the description to what the uh, specs were and stuff like that but they haven't changed much the main difference I see between the two of these is the Corsair the newer one has very nice braided like what are no doubt rubber lines that are probably a little bit less susceptible to damage and uh, degradation over time where the OG one has that like Sinflex or plastic lines that doesn't really fare out uh, as well I, I don't think also the diameter of the hose might be a little bit smaller on the, the older Corsair but uh, you know if, if we see here we go back to Mortal Kombat uh, and Antec said that the original H100 series or H series was, uh, you know, awesome but expensive and totally worth the money, you know, if you wanted a good quality AIO. So we see here, you know, it's uh, got a little button with three modes a quiet mode, uh, you know, semi performance mode, and an all out mode. Right now I got it in the middle because the quietest one is quiet but it doesn't really do its job as well so in the middle I think it's the perfect balance it's not too loud right now and you plug the fans into the header much like on the newer one and uh, actually plug get power for the pump over a Molex connection which is connected over here baba -ba, comes up and then you plug a one wire connection onto the uh, CPU fan header on your motherboard 
And that's a long time ago, like even this motherboard's pretty nice, but older budget motherboards, something you might be putting this on, didn't have a lot of fan header control, and I think that's where they like took it into their own hands. There is a little proprietary connector on the old one too, uh, for what was Corsair Link version one. I'm pretty sure that had nothing to do with really monitoring or anything like that. Uh, it might have had to do with controlling the light that's inside of this thing or linking it to some Corsair Dominator memory, but I can't find anyone actually using it. Where this one has a straight up USB connection on it that you plug full time into your motherboard if you want to use the software uh, with a, like a, K, a USB cable. I, misplaced it it's probably on the floor over there anyways and uh, then you can run the Corsair link software to get diagnostic information and kind of see uh, you know how what your pump speeds at and you can change settings and stuff like that so we'll play around with that once I get this one set up but uh, as you can see she's running at a cool 60 degrees and I let this run for an hour and it never went above 62 degrees so it's totally stable totally you know awesome and then if we want to just run a quick Cinebench here. I gotta get this full screen again. Boof! Full screen. Full screen! There we go. Uh, we'll run Cinebench here. 700 and Cinebench, a little lower, probably because I got a couple things running. Uh, but if we check out the temperatures, uh, the package temperature never went, well, let me see here, above 66. And the CPU temperature on the motherboard uh, hit 69. So it's doing a really good job at five gigahertz, which is, you know, this thing's claim to fame, uh, this, this processor was the five gigahertz barrier. It's doing good running that, no problem. So let's go ahead and do a little switch out montage and then we'll get this newer one hooked up and see, you know, exactly what the difference is between old and new and whether or not it's, you know, all right to use an older, like I know this is just a one, you know, case scenario, but whether or not you can get away with using an older AIO you know, if it's like maybe three, four years old, should you be worried that it's not, you know, working as good as it once did? Or is it going to be fine? Also, uh, when I first plugged this thing in, it made a lot of noise, like water rushing through the pump. And it's gone away, you know, in the first five minutes and hasn't come back. So if you plug an AL, older AIO in and it starts making some weird fish tank noises, don't be too worried. So queue up the switch around the switcheroo and we'll get to some more performance numbers and see is it worth upgrading your AIO or will the five-year-old or seven-year-old version still do the trick <laughs> Are you the one making all the noise up here? Yeah. What are you playing? Tractors? All the cars are fixed and broken. All the cars are fixed and broken? They're sick and broken? Alright, well thanks for making lots of noise for my video. Love you. Okay, we have the Corsair uh, H110i version 2 installed and I'm, I'm quite surprised actually. It's doing quite a bit better than this cooler which i guess shouldn't be surprising but this did well enough that i wasn't expecting uh, a more than 10 degree difference but we see an ida 64 it's about 52 uh and i ran it for uh 30 minutes and let the you know coolant get up to temperature off camera once i got this all set up and it was uh doing a pretty good job at staying well under 55 maybe spike to 55 for a second the fans would ramp up bring her back down to 50 and then you know that kind of dealy but uh we saw about 65 60 to 65 with this cooler so i'd be interested to know you know if you could buy this and transport it through time in the package you know freshly manufactured install it here would we get temperatures closer to this one or if the permeation and maybe some, uh, you know, a corrosion on the copper is causing the difference, the 10 degree difference. But this is still performing very, very well, uh, you know, within acceptable limits for 5 gigahertz on a 9590. One of the hottest CPUs you could try this on. Uh, but yes, the newer product, the Corsair, is doing about 10 degrees better 
55 and under uh, on an overclocked, you know, five gigahertz. We see here the Corsair Link software. It's got its own temperature uh, sensor in the pump or something that's showing uh, a 32 degrees Celsius when the package temperature is apparently 35. But you know, Ida 64 is actually showing that it's 53 degrees. So, and it's fairly inaudible too. So, uh, you know, th th this is a pretty good system. I gotta say, it's doing 10 degrees better than its brethren but you know that's six years old and very well used and still kept things within acceptable limits so since i don't have a brand new freshly manufactured corsair h100 to test and even if you did have a brand new one it's sitting idle in a box for you know five years probably would uh, still lend itself to some sort of you know discrepancy in the numbers i would like to put a different little control in here I'm going to install the Reven, you know, this big massive heatsink on here, the uh, Uranos, which uh, Reven sent to me. It's very nice. Thank you very much. I've used it before for a few tests here and there, but it's a pretty good air cooler. I'm going to go ahead and put it on this system. We'll just check the temperatures and see, is a six-year-old AIO going to do better than like a $30 or $40 very good air cooler. I think that's about how much you can get that for on Amazon. Or, you know, are you better off buying, you know, a, a Craigslist AIO and maybe hoping and praying that it'll do very well for you? Or is it just, you know, worth it to put this in there because it's going to meet with the performance of a well-used AIO anyways? So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. We'll do a conclusion. We'll switch over to this. But uh, so far, very impressed with the H110i version 2 uh, at being 10 or 15 degrees better than its brethren. Go ahead and switch her out, Timmy Joe. <laughs> Surprising conclusion, actually. Uh, we got the air cooler installed. It's been running for 16, 17 minutes here, and it's reached its max temperature. Boom! 59 degrees. Right in the middle of uh, the good, brand new Corsair and the old six year old one. So, a $30, $40 air cooler with six copper heat pipes, nickel plated, aluminum nice little uh, unit from Reven uh, will best a six-year-old well-used 240 mil uh, you know AIO from Corsair that's that's interesting so that does put some uh, you know perspective in here so uh, whether or not the you know if this was brand new uh, you know if, if it was working you know at its top peak condition uh, you know it, it would be closer you know to the the brand new you know the the 2018 version i don't know um I, without having going back in time and grabbing one off the shelf and coming back here and testing it i i can't tell that because you know these have been out of production it's impossible to buy one that will be you know working as good as it could but uh it still held its own it still kept the 9590 one of the hottest cpus out there cool uh cool enough to you know run a stress test but we're at 59 degrees on a 30 40 dollar air cooler and uh it's actually ends up only being five degrees warmer than one of the best aios you can buy so that really puts things into perspective you know something that's three times the cost so in the end that does really put some perspective into things if you want the best possible cooling Yes, the Corsair, you know, is going to be one of the best options. There are other AIOs, but they all typically use the Asetek pump that's on this thing. You know, a little bit of variation here and there. But uh, six years of innovation and six years of use only gets you 10 degrees difference. And an air cooler sits right in the middle, being a third the price. Um, that, that's interesting to me. This thing's ramped up pretty good right now. I had to set it in the BIOS. I set it to turbo. Uh, but, you know, the PWM controller is making this thing you know, a little bit loud. Inside a case, it might even be a little bit, uh, you know, the, the, the noise would be less, but I'm sure it would be warmer. 
uh, and how you set up the AIO, maybe that would be a better situation, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, this will, you know, it's kind of a debate. Water versus air, what's better? Well, for a third the cost, pff, worth looking at. Links in the description, I'm just saying. Pretty good stuff. So, I'm at watching you join Instagram and Twitter. I uh, hope you enjoyed this scientific look at, uh, you know, cooling through the generations. And maybe it'll help you uh, on your next decision on your build on whether you should get, uh, you know, I would avoid used AIOs because all the kinds of things can go wrong. But even after six years, a good quality one might still do the job. Uh, but, you know, might decide between a $30, $40 air cooler and a $130 uh, AIO uh, because there's very little difference between them unless you're up there in the very top echelon of performance. If you want to help me out on Patreon, that's a thing. Patreon.com slash Timmy Joe. And also, uh, donate hardware to the channel. Some of this stuff was provided by Reven, but uh, this was provided by a friend. This was provided by, a, uh, you know, whatever. Another friend. And, uh, yeah, we're all done. So I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go, I'm going to dismantle this, clean up my desk, and spend some time with me wife.